If I told you to visualize a 16-year-old girl whose boat won a national championship in crew and who rode 165 miles from Wellesley to Provincetown over the course of one weekend, I'm guessing you'd visualize someone tall, strong, and athletic. And then there's me. I am four foot nine, 73 pounds, and not very athletic. And yet I have done both of these things in the past two months. In fact, my being a varsity athlete is kind of a joke in the family. If you knew me well, you'd know that I'm not what even a casual observer would call physically fit. But this past summer, my dad and I rode for the second time in the Pan Mass Challenge, a major two-day cycling fundraiser to raise money for the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. After successfully riding 80 miles on day one, we started day two by waking up at 4 a.m., riding over the Bourne Bridge at dawn and watching the sun rise over the Cape Cod Canal. But as the day wore on, the exhaustion set in and I began to doubt my ability to finish the event. With 10 miles left to go on what felt like an interminably steep hill, my dad and I stopped for a quick water break. Unfortunately, when we went to restart, we lost our balance and fell onto the hard pavement. My dad's elbow was bleeding profusely and my knee, which had been aching for most of the past two days, was scraped up and throbbing. But nothing was broken, so we resolved to finish the event. We remounted our bike, summited the hill, and turned north onto a major road for the last eight mile stretch, straight into a fierce headwind. I could see the tip of the cape in the distance where the finish line was right there in front of me. But the wind whipped around us, seemingly pushing us backwards. As we struggled to make progress, a posse of bikers came up beside us, drafting behind each other, each member taking a turn in the front so as to allow the others behind them to take a load off. They asked us if we wanted to join and we gladly tucked in behind them, bonding with our new friends who pulled us along. As we rode together, we were unified, unified by our exhaustion, unified by our common goal, and unified by a cause. With their support and encouragement, I was able to push past my physical limitations, exhaustion, and pain, and make it to the finish. But I didn't just do this ride to feel athletic. I was motivated to help raise money and find a cure for pediatric brain tumors. I'm Samantha Janauer and I am a brain tumor survivor. 13 years ago, just after my third birthday, our babysitter noticed that I had stopped using my right arm. She thought I had a stroke. Shortly thereafter, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I had a day-long neurosurgery at Children's Hospital a few days later. The surgeons were able to remove most, but not all of the tumor. And six months later, the remaining tumor started to grow again. The oncologist discussed the various options with my parents, explaining that the frontline chemotherapy for this disease was toxic and not particularly effective. But doing nothing was not an option, and the long-term side effects of radiating a young brain are far worse. My first round of chemotherapy required weekly visits to the Jimmy Fund Clinic for injections through a port in my chest. My mom says I used to ask her, what was it like when you had chemo as a kid? Didn't everyone have to go through this? That chemo worked for a while, until it didn't. My tumor started to grow again just as I was entering kindergarten. This time I started a new regimen, taking my medication orally instead of through injections. For a young kid who had a hard time taking pills, it was pure torture. My parents tried to hide the medicine and pudding, but I always spit it out. To this day, I still can't eat pudding. Thanks, Mom. Luckily, this round of treatments was more successful, and my tumor has not grown since the first grade, four years after my initial diagnosis. If I'm being honest, I don't remember much from this time period of my life. I was young, and it was traumatic. I was fortunate to have such terrific caregivers at the Dana-Farber, as well as loving and supporting family and friends to help me through this ordeal. Somehow, I've managed to block out the most unpleasant memories of being a cancer patient from my mind. As a young adult and childhood cancer survivor, I now see the myriad ways in which this disease has affected me, both psychologically and physically. One example of this is that my right leg is shorter than my left. 
While this doesn't affect me if I walk or stand, I can't run or participate in most sports without hyperextending my knee. As another example, my petite stature is a function of having fallen off the growth curb while on chemo. Compounding matters, the doctors ascribed my stunted growth to the treatments, and we didn't discover that I had celiac disease for a few years later. This caused me to miss critical growth years as my pre-teenage body was unable to properly absorb nutrition. When I was three, I started taking dance class. I loved twirling around to the music and ignoring the chaos of life around me. But cancer and treatment made this difficult. Even years after leaving the clinic, I still felt like I could not keep up with the other kids. While I still loved it, I eventually quit as a result. When I entered high school, I knew almost no one. Despite being a generally outgoing kid, I felt nervous and shy. I became acutely aware of the fact that I had not grown or developed like the other kids. To my classmates, I looked more like a younger sibling than their peer. Making matters even worse, in an environment where most kids participated in athletics, I was one of the few not on a fall sports team. But I soon found that none of this matters. My personality and my passions are far more defining than my looks. I found a group of friends who like me for who I am and don't care about what I look like or what I do or don't do. If you had asked me before I started high school if I ever thought I would be on a competitive sports team, I would have laughed and said no without any hesitation. But in the spring of my freshman year, I discovered crew, a sport that relies on small people like myself to steer the boat, manage the race, and most importantly, motivate the rowers. For the first time in my life, I was a part of a competitive sports team where I could contribute and was welcomed. My diminutive size was actually an advantage. And as I worked to improve my skills, the girls came to trust me. I love the feeling of being a part of such a close-knit competitive team. This newfound confidence that I found within myself through crew inspired me to take risks in other places in my life. That spring, I resolved to no longer let the side effects of my cancer hold me back. That spring, I resolved to ride the Pan Mass Challenge for the first time. For years, I had watched my dad and his friends train for the PMC to raise money for the Dana-Farber. And despite there being a PMC team named after me, I never thought I could ride on Team Samantha myself. Now, I wanted to be out there, thanking those that had helped me in my darkest hours and supporting the other riders. So my dad rented a tandem bike, and we started to train together. Our first time out, I could barely ride 10 miles. And yet, our training paid off, and my endurance gradually improved. I remember being extremely nervous at the start, but as the miles flew by, I met tons of people who told me how cancer affected them. But I wasn't really, truly inspired until mile 60 at the Pedal Partner Tent. The PMC every year allows pediatric cancer patients to come and cheer on their riders, inspiring them to keep pedaling. When I was younger, I had been one of these kids not having any hope for riding myself, but encouraging the riders to keep pedaling. Now I found myself proudly standing in the position of a rider. I was overcoming my overwhelming odds. I no longer let cancer or anything else hold me back. I was taking control of my situation. So I turn to you and ask, what has been holding you back? Everyone has obstacles to overcome in life. You and you alone are the only one who can push past the artificial boundaries you have set up for yourself to help others and change the world. With hard work, determination, and confidence in yourself, you can achieve much more than you know. Thank you.